Back in the Word of God today, we're going to be in Habakkuk chapter 2. But before we get started, let's ask for words of wisdom from our Heavenly Father in Yeshua Jesus Christ, the Messiah's precious, precious name. Habakkuk in the Hebrew tongue means embrace. When we come here in the flesh body, we are going to do one of two things. We're going to follow our Heavenly Father, His words, or we're going to follow Lucifer, Satan, that old serpent called the devil, and the ways of the world. So that word in Habakkuk meaning embrace takes on a huge new meaning because we're going to embrace our Heavenly Father, His word, because He tells us the plan especially in these end days of how things are going to come down. He teaches us the mode of operation of the enemy. So when we put on the whole gospel armor, as Ephesians chapter 6 tells us to do, to stand against the wiles of the devil, of the devil, or we're going to follow the ways of the world, what sounds good and easy, and those things, that doctrine out there that teaches you or tells people you don't have to read and study and know what the Word of God has to say. No. We're here to make a decision. We're either going to listen to what our Holy Heavenly Father says and His Word, or we're going to follow the ways of the world, which is into, basically, destruction. So let's get into this. Now, in Habakkuk chapter 1, verses 1 through 4, the prophet is crying out to our Holy Heavenly Father. Verses 5 through 11, Yahweh answers the prophet. Verses 12 in chapter 1 through chapter 2 verse 1 the prophets crying out again and what we're going to be in today we're going to start at verse 3 we're going to back up one verse that's Yahweh he answers and he's talking to the prophet and he's letting him know everything that he needs to know because Habakkuk is like I said before Judah is being taken captive the people are in the midst of a bunch of sin and iniquity they've turned away from God they have new gods and they will not worship. They will not do right. They won't do the next right thing. And we know when we fall short, and we will do that in these flesh bodies, that we are to go to our Heavenly Father with a repentant heart, asking for forgiveness and changing our ways. So let's get into this and let's see what our Heavenly Father needs us to know. Habakkuk chapter 2, we're going to start at verse 3. For the vision is yet for an appointed time. So this is our Heavenly Father speaking back to Habakkuk. He's saying, the vision is yet for an appointed time that is the end of this dispensation of time when Jesus Christ will return here. But at the end it shall speak and not lie, though it tarry, wait for it, because it will surely come, it will not tarry. Even though it seems like it's been a long time since Jesus Christ, and to man's, in man's time, it, you know, many generations have passed. But he says, even though it seems like it tarries, you wait for it. Because it will not tarry in the end. Verse 4. Behold his soul which is lifted up is not upright in him. But the just shall live by faith. Now who is this one we're talking about? His soul is lifted up. That's pride. We're talking about the wicked one. We're talking about Satan. No longer wanted to be a protective cherubim. He wants to be God. Still wants to be God. And we're going to go into that in just a few minutes. When Habakkuk is getting an answer here, he's talking about, he says, Behold the proud one, that is Satan, and his fate, which is going to be coming judgment. And the preservation of the just is, is eternal life with our living God. Verse 5, Yea, also because he transgresses, he transgresseth by wine. He is a proud man, neither keepeth a home who enlargeth his desire as hell and as death and cannot be satisfied, but gathereth unto him all nations and keepeth unto him all people. Now we know when the new world order comes in, it's going to come in. It's going to receive a deadly wound and that's when the Antichrist will come on the scene and he will heal that deadly wound. And it says in Revelation chapter 13 verse 3, the whole world wanders after the beast. That is billions and billions of people. They begin to worship and serve this beast system. So it goes from a political governmental system to the religion of the world. We know it's going to come down. Now what is it talking about? Yea, 
also because he transgresseth by wine. Now this wine, Yayan, you know, if, if a person takes partakes in too much wine and he crosses over from being a person who uses it for the to, to calm his nerves or whatever to going into the disease of alcoholism, you know, it's overtaken him. It's overtaken his mind, body, and soul, so to speak. And think about as a cucumber becomes a pickle, a pickle can never become a cucumber again. So complete abstinence is what that person has to partake of. And complete absence of yayan, which is wine. But I'm going to talk to you, and we're going to go into just mentioning that. Look, look at it physically, but then we're going to go into Isaiah uh, chapter 29. We're going to start reading at verse 9, because this has more severe implications when we start looking spiritually. Isaiah chapter 29, and we're going to start reading at verse 9. Stay yourselves and wander, cry ye out and cry. They are drunken, but not with wine. They stagger, but not with strong drink. What is he talking about? What does our Heavenly Father need us to know? They are staggering around, seemingly drunken, but it's not with wine. Listen up. For the Lord hath poured out upon you the spirit of deep sleep, and has closed your eyes, the prophets and your rulers, the seeth hath he covered. Now, why would our Lord God Almighty do that? Let's go over to Second Thessalonians real quick, and I'm going to read this. This is the writing of Paul. But for those people who will not seek out the truth, Father says, I will send you such strong delusion. Remember that? Second Thessalonians chapter 2, we're going to start reading at verse 10. And with all deceivableness of unrighteousness in them that perish, because they receive not the love of the truth, that they might be saved. Verse 11, And for this cause God shall, God shall send them strong delusion that they should believe a lie. So when a person does not want to know the truth, they would rather listen to... Let's go over... I'm going to go one other place here. Let's go over to Isaiah chapter 30, and we're going to start reading at verse 9. It says... That this is a rebellious people, lying children, children that will not hear the law of the Lord. Verse 10, this is what they say. This is the type of people who do not want to know the truth. We say to the seers, see not, and to the prophets, prophesy not unto us right things. Speak unto us smooth things. Prophesy deceits. They don't want to know the truth. They're telling the people that can see the truth, don't look. And they're telling the prophets, the teachers, the preachers out there, don't teach us righteous things. Don't teach us the next right thing to do. Teach us smooth, easy listening. Teach us these deceits. That's deception. Teach us lies. Verse 11, get ye out of the way. Turn aside out of the path because the Holy One of Israel to cease from before us. Verse 12, Wherefore, thus saith the Holy One of Israel, because you despise the word and trust in oppression and perverseness and stay thereon. Verse 13, Therefore, this iniquity shall be to you as a breach ready to fall, swelling out of the high wall, whose breaking cometh suddenly at an instant. Now we're talking about the return of Jesus Christ. He's coming. There's going to be a shaking like we've never seen before. Verse 14, And he shall break it as the breaking of the potter's vessel that is broken in pieces. He shall not spare, so that there shall not be found in the bursting of it a sure to take fire from the hearth, or to take water withal, withal out of the pit. Now we're looking prophetically. That's going to happen. Father's promised it's going to come down exactly as it is written. So let's go over here back into Isaiah chapter 29, and I'm going to read verse 11. This is what is happening to people who are trying to know what the Word of God has to say, and they go into places of supposed houses of God. They should be Bethels, but they are houses of vanity. They are Bethavins. What does it say? And the vision of all is becoming to you as the words of a book that is sealed, which men deliver to you. I'm sorry, deliver to one that is learned, saying, Read this, I pray thee. And he saith, I cannot, for it is sealed. 
Now, many people will tell us the book of Revelation is not meant to be studied and understood. But what does Revelation chapter 22, verse 10 say? And he saith unto me, seal not the sayings of this prophecy of this book, for the time is at hand. It, you know, people telling God's children, you don't have to read and study and know what it has to say. We don't have to understand it. Yes, we do. It's very, very important that we understand what the Word of God says, especially in these end days. Verse 12, And the book is delivered to him that is learned, saying, Read this, I pray thee. And he saith, I am not learned. Been, been to college, been to places of to learn what the Word of God says, but they say, No, I, I can't read it because I'm not learned. Listen up, verse 13. Wherefore the Lord saith, For as much as this people draw near me with their mouth and with their lips to honor me, but have removed their heart from me, and their fear toward me is taught by the precepts of man. What is a precept of man? That's the tradition of man. We know that the traditions of man makes the word of God to none effect. And that's Mark chapter 13, verse 7. Let's go back into Habakkuk chapter 2. Verse 6, and it reads, Shall not all these take up a parable against him and a taunting proverb against him and say, Woe to him that increaseth that which is not his. How long? And to him that ladeth himself with thick clay. Now, this is the first of five woes in this chapter. Woes, look here, lo, alas, take heed. There's a warning in this. Now, what is it talking about, this parable? Let's go over to Isaiah chapter 14. We're going to start reading at verse 4. Thou shalt, that thou shalt take up this proverb against the king of Babylon and say, How hath the oppressor ceased, the golden city ceased? Now, what are we talking about? We're talking about Babylon. Remember, Babel... Uh, means confusion. That's a state of confusion, mass confusion, especially in these end days. Verse 5, The Lord hath broken the staff of the wicked and the scepter of the rulers. Verse 6, He who smote the people with wrath with a continual stroke, he that ruled the nations in anger is persecuted, and none hindereth. Verse 7, The whole world is at rest and is quiet. They break forth into singing. Now, that is something we are looking forward to. Why? What's going to happen to bring all this peace and joy? Listen up. Yea, the fir tree rejoice at thee, and the cedars of Lebanon, saying, Since thou art laid down, no feller is come up against us. God's people. There's no one to come up against us now. Why? Because Satan is locked into that pit for a thousand years. We know that that the, is the millennium, but... No feller has come up against us. No lumberjack has come up to cut us down, to seize us as Satan is going to do in these end days. Verse 9, Hell from beneath is moved for thee to meet thee. At thy coming it stirreth up the dead for thee, even the chief ones of the earth. It hath raised up from their thrones all the kings of the nation. Verse 10, And they shall speak and say unto thee, Are thou also become weak as we art thou become like unto us verse 11 the pomp is brought down to the grave we're talking about the antichrist we're talking about satan this is his bringing up to when he is going to be locked in that millennium for that millennium in the pit thousand years and we know he will be released a short time at the end of the millennium to test the children are they going to follow him again are they going to follow our Holy Heavenly Father. But he's already received his sentence. He's going to be turned to ashes from within. I'm talking about Satan. And you can that documentation is Ezekiel chapter 28, verse 18 and 19. But this is what the people, the followers of the, followers of the world, they wouldn't listen to God's word. They followed this entity. This is what they're going to say. The pomp is brought down to the grave and the noise of the vials, the worms is spread under thee and the worms cover thee. Satan, that's a statement of degradation. Think about him being covered top to bottom with maggots. Verse 12. How art thou fallen from heaven, O Lucifer, son of the morning? How art thou cut down to the ground which doth wicken the nations? 
For thou hast said in thy heart, I will ascend to heaven. I will exalt my throne above the stars of God. I will sit also upon the mount of the congregation in the sides of the north. I will ascend above the heights of the clouds. I will be like the most high. Yet thou shalt be brought down to hell to the sides of the pit. They that see thee shall narrowly look upon thee and consider thee, saying, Is this the man that made the earth a tremble, that did shake the kingdoms? He's going down. He has received his sentence. Y'all, it's going to come down exactly as it is written. It is written, so it shall be. Verse 17, that made the world as a wilderness and destroy the cities thereof, that open not the house of his prisoners. We're talking about Satan. His his battle that he brought on himself because he lifted them up so, up so high with pride, no longer wanted to be a protective cherubim of our living God. He wanted to be God. He's going down. Let's go back into Habakkuk chapter 2, verse 7, and it reads, Shall thy not rise up suddenly? that thou shalt bite thee, and awake that shall vex thee, and thou shalt be for booties unto them. Now, when things start really coming down, when the Antichrist and his fallen angels get to here, and things start revving up really heated, they're going to come quickly. That's why we got to stay into the Word of God and know and take direction because our Heavenly Father has showed us His plan and how things are going to come down. We stay close to our Heavenly Father through His Word. His Word is true and He is faithful. Verse 8. Because thou hast spoiled many nations, all the remnant of the people shall spoil thee. Because of men's blood and for the violence of the land, of the city, and of all that dwell therein. Now, what is this talking about? When... The election are brought up before the Antichrist and his councils for a testimony of Jesus Christ and a testimony against the Antichrist. Now, you've got to think about this and be prepared because you're going to have billions and billions of people thinking this is their Lord and Savior. And as Satan, when we are brought up before these councils, these people... Be prepared for what people are going to say and think. It's not going to be pretty, but we know what we're doing because we're listening to the Word of God as He prepares us for these end days. Habakkuk chapter 2, verse 9. Now, this is another woe. This is the second of the five woes. Woe to him that coveteth an evil covetous to his house, that he may set his nest on high, that he may be delivered from the power of evil now what is this talking about and we'll see it in the next let's go ahead and read the next verse it kind of helps hold things together thou hast consulted shame to thy house by cutting off many people and has sinned against thy soul what this is talking about we do not consult with satan we do not uh allow him in our lives you know, we have power. <clears throat> we have been given over Satan and all his evil entities. We do not consult. We do not consent. We do not negotiate with Satan. We send him packing. Verse 11. For the stone shall cry out of the wall, and the beam out of the timber shall answer it. This calling out, this is warning things to come down, warning this dispensation of time to end, it is written, and it shall be. Verse 12, this is number three, woes. Woe to him that built a town with blood and established the city by iniquity. Now, I'm going to go into Revelation chapter 17. I'm going to read just a little bit. I'm going to start reading at verse 4. What is this city? City of Babylon. Complete confusion of the world. Verse 4 in the great chapter, in the great book of Revelation, chapter 17, and it reads, And the woman was arrayed in purple and scarlet and decked with gold and precious stones and pearls, having a golden cup in her hand, full of abominations and filthiness of her fornication. That is, 
That's idolatry. That This is the great apostasy. Listen up. <clears throat> and upon her forehead was a name written, Mystery, Babylon the Great, the mother of harlots and abominations of the earth. Mis this mystery is musterion in the Greek. It's the closing of the lips to secretly come in to initiate and indoctrinate people into a new religion. Babylon the Great, that's confusion the Great, immense confusion. The mother of harlots and abominations of the earth. This harlotry, she no longer wanted to be waiting on Jesus Christ to return. She has fallen in, spiritually speaking, in line, in bed with the Antichrist, spiritually speaking here. Not waiting on the return of Jesus Christ. That is the most abominable thing that anyone could do. Especially someone who calls themselves by Christ's name. A Christian man, Christ man or Christ woman. Is to follow the Antichrist. That great apostasy that is going to come in. It is written and it is going to be. Verse 7. Listen up. And I saw the woman drunken with the blood of saints and with the blood of the martyrs of Jesus and when I saw her, I wondered with great admiration. Again, that drunkenness that with idolatry and filth and false doctrine. Where, yes, physical drunkenness is bad. But when it talks about this, we're talking about eternal souls here. Drunken with confusion, idolatry, not waiting on Jesus Christ, but following the Antichrist. Back into Habakkuk chapter verse 13 and it reads behold is it not of the lords of hosts that the people shall labor in the very in the very fire and the people shall weary themselves for very vanity emptiness now when you see lord of hosts you know our heavenly father is over all earthly and heavenly armies even Satan's army are only allowed to do as our Heavenly Father allows them to do. Remember that, verse 14, For the earth shall be filled with the knowledge of the glory of the Lord as the waters cover the sea. That is what we're waiting for. When the knowledge of the Lord, when we move into our spiritual bodies and there's no more confusion, a clarity of mind, thought processes, and the Knowledge of the glory of the Lord as the water that covers the sea. Immense. It's going to be everywhere. Verse 15. <clears throat> this is the number four in the woes. Woe unto him that giveth his neighbor drink, that puttest thy bottle to him, that maketh him drunken also, that thou mayest look upon their nakedness. Now, When we think about putting, giveth his neighbor drink, that putteth the bottle to him. It's like taking a bottle of alcohol to someone who is known to be an alcoholic and putting the bottle to their lips, making them drink. People who are not prepared, you've got to think about the false doctrine that's out there. They won't read and study and they're going into houses, calling themselves houses of God, but they're houses of emptiness and vanity now. I have been there doing what I thought was the right thing to do. It took one soul going, you know, that's not in the Bible. And when I started studying and really getting into the Word of God, I realized. And I don't have a bone to pick with these people, so to speak. I just want people to come out of the confusion of the things that are being taught in churches many days. But this is becoming drunken with false doctrine verse 16 thou art filled with shame for glory drink thou also and let thy foreskin be uncovered the cup of the lord's righteous i'm sorry the cup of the lord's right hand shall be turned unto thee and shameful spewing shall be on thy glory now this uh Shameful spewing, Hebrew 7.22, is an immense disgrace. Now, 
when we're talking about the cup of the Lord, we're talking about the wrath of God that's coming. Remember when Jesus Christ said in Luke chapter 22, verse 42, he said, saying, Father, is thou willing, if thou willing, remove this cup from me. Nevertheless, not my will, but thine will be done. That is the cup of wrath. It wasn't because Jesus Christ was dreading to go and be on the cross and be crucified. It had been foretold in the Old Testament. It is written. It is going to be. Remember when Jesus Christ was on the cross and he cried out, Eli, Eli, lama shabbatane. My God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? And people think that he was having a weak physical flesh moment. No, he was pointing you to Psalms chapter 22, the foretelling of the crucifixion. Now that is David writing that psalm, but it starts out, My God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? He was on the cross, arms nailed, hands nailed, feet nailed, thorn, thorn, thorny crown on, and he's teaching God's children, Go look, prophecy is important. Because it is written, it shall be. Now he's on the cross about to decease from the flesh body. And he's pointing us to Psalms chapter 22. When he says, Eli, Eli, lama shabbatane, go look. The telling, read the whole chapter. Verse 17, For the violence of Lebanon shall cover thee, and the spoil of beasts which made them afraid because of men's blood, and for the violence of the land, of the city, and of all that dwell therein. Verse 18, what profited the graven image that the maker thereof has graven it, the molten image and a teacher of lies that the maker of his work trusted therein to make dumb idols, things that we put, anything that comes before our Heavenly Father in his word is an idol. We are have to have no gods before our living God, period. Now, if you are trusting in an, a graven image to bring you happiness and bring you peace of mind and to give you some kind of wisdom, then this work of a man's hand, that's never going to bring peace, happiness, love, contentment. Let's read the next verse. This is the final woe. Woe unto him that is that saith to the wood, awake to the dumb stone, arise it shall teach. Behold, it is laid over with gold and silver, and there is no breath at all in the midst of thee. There's no spirit in it. There's no, it's ruach in the Hebrew tongue. That it, You'll find that in H7307. There's no Holy Spirit in these things. They are images. They are uh, material possessions. They're things that will never bring happiness to a soul will never bring peace and contentment to a soul. They are simply going to nothingness. Verse 20, but the Lord is in his holy temple. Let all the earth keep silence before him. Uh, Zephaniah chapter 1 verse 7, hold thy peace at the presence of the Lord God for the day of the Lord is at hand and we are waiting we are waiting for that marriage feast. We are waiting for the celebration. So we wait. We wait for our, our living God. We wait. And there will be a time that we will be silent. And we will wait for the coming truth of the word of God. And how things are going to transpire in these end days. But that reverence in the presence of our living God. Y'all, that's what we're working for. That's what we're looking for. And it's going to be a great day. And that's going to be it for today. If you like today's teaching, like, share, and subscribe. And let's get the word out. Hope you have a great day. And join us again.